Hey friends, it's Jen and I'm here to talk about traveling with your hair topper. First, I want to acknowledge this cute, cute hairstyle I got today. Um, and I love it because the hair is out of the face and it just looks so natural because I have my hair in front with it. Uh, and I just love it. Um, so yeah, let's get into it with uh, traveling with your topper. Let's first talk about TSA. Now, before I, I went traveling with the topper for the first time, I was a little nervous, um, but after going through TSA, probably in the last year, I've had my topper for a little less than a year, and I would say I've probably gone through TSA maybe a good 12 times, um, maybe more, but um, it's been internationally and domestically, and I felt like in the beginning I was really nervous about it, um, but after going through them a few times, I was like, okay, this is not really a big deal. It's always different. Um, like for example, here at O'Hare, um, they have those like body scanners you step into and like they scan all around you and then you step out and then I always turn around to look at the, um, little screen to see what it highlighted. And I think if not all the time, most of the times it highlights my head. Now, then I have to wait for a woman to come and then, you know, they usually just kind of like softly pat my hair or like um, just like smooth, smooth it or pat it or, you know, whatever each one does. But this one time, this last time, this woman did it and it was like a pat and then like hard drag. And I don't know if it's because she knew it was a hair piece or whatnot, but regardless, but my hair piece, Bella, did not move. And I just went on with my day. Um, and then there's other times where, um, you know, you step through a detector and it goes off because it says you have metal somewhere in your body. And uh, this last time, one of the guys told me to follow your bra, just step aside and someone will come check you. So she got her little, you know, detection wand and was going from like the feet, working her way up. And I was like, okay, she's probably gonna get to the head, go like this, and I'm gonna have to tell her what's up. And before I even went traveling, before I put myself in a situation that I'm nervous about or that's on my mind, I always have create like a one or two liner uh, of what I'm going to say. Just so in the moment I'm not caught off, caught off guard and like super nervous and don't say the right thing or don't say what I want to say. So I have a little one liner in case they do say, hey, you know, why is the detector going off on your head? I would just say um, this. I'm wearing a hair piece that has metal clips on it. Um, did you want to see it? And then if they respond yes, then I would say, okay, um, I want to go or I, I want to request a private room because I'm not about to whip this off right now, you know? And then I'm sure they would comply, no problem. But honestly, I feel like they probably, they see thousands of people a day. We are not the one or only ones with a hairpiece or a topper or a wig. Like it's probably the norm. So um, I feel like we just need to not worry about it once it comes into a situation where we have to like get into it, then get into it, but don't worry about something that you shouldn't worry about yet. You know, um, when they start scanning you, I was like, shit, should I just be like, I have a, I have a hair topper? <laughs> not like that, but just be like, oh, just so you know, like, no, I don't think we should talk about anything or expose ourselves or put ourselves into a situation where we're going to have to then talk about the topper if, if, um, it's not presented. So TSA, don't worry about it. I have not had trouble with it at all. Um, just, you know, detectors and extra checking, but it's not a big deal. So this trip turned out to be really unexpected or an unexpected turn of events. So I felt like it was an awesome, awesome trip to create content for this video. So first let's get into what I brought with me. Um, the first thing is a converter. Now you might not need a converter wherever you go, wherever you're going, but um, since I was in Europe, I did have to use a converter for there. Uh, if you're in China, you'll need one too. Um, I just bought this one that has like, um, Basically, I can go anywhere anywhere in the world and use this one. It's just easier. Um, it has some USB plugs. So if you're gonna bring hot tools with you, you definitely want to bring that with you because you don't want to go somewhere and then all of a sudden you can't use it. Now, going into the hot tools, I brought just a straightener with me. That's usually all I really bring. Um, I sometimes use a 
uh, blow dryer, but I always contact them or look in the listing to see if they have one um, available there because why have to carry it with you if you don't need to. And then if you use a curling iron, bring a curling iron. Um, I did come across this like curling iron straightener combination, mainly for travel. And if that's something you do, if you do both, that's something definitely to look into. I don't really curl my hair like that, so I wouldn't get it, but something to look into if you do. Now, when I straighten my hair, I put it on my foam head with like pins so I can pull it or, you know, straighten it and it pulls and it stays on, doesn't fall off. I don't like, doing it in my hair or on my head because I feel like no matter how gentle you try to be, there will be some sort of tension on there. So I do my styling on the wig heads. Um, so I didn't obviously bring a wig head with me. Um, that would be ridiculous. And one time I did have a friend hold my topper while I straightened it, but I just feel like I just didn't really want to be doing that. Um, so I came up, I was just sitting in the room when I was going to straighten it, my topper and it just kind of hit me and like I have a video of a little hair hack I did which worked out freaking awesome. All right, and then the hair products that I brought. Um, I don't have anything here right now, but it's be this would be my um, my heat protectant. My heat protectant is in a big bottle, and I don't want to carry that with me, so I just put it into this little bottle, um, and then just kind of like put it into my hands, and then ran it through my fingers any time, or and ran it with my fingers through my hair anytime I needed it. And then the next thing that I brought was a uh, leave-in conditioner, uh, just to spray every other day or whenever I felt it was necessary. Um, so bring your favorite products of that. And then I brought a hair oil and, um, this I would run through, like if I happened to wash my topper, um, which I did not think I would have to wash my topper cause I was just going six days to Amsterdam, but, um, turn of events that we'll get into, uh, led me to washing it. The next thing, and I would put this on, um, every night or every other night, depends how the hair feels, and you know when it needs a little more loving. Um, but it's an overnight serum. Uh, this one's by Living Proof. And then um, the last product I brought was um, a dry dry shampoo. Now, because I don't wash my bio hair every day, um, I, so I would use it the days that I wouldn't shower, which would be every other day. Just And I would just spray it like uh, on the sides here and the perimeters, and then on in this area of my bio hair and I rubbed it in just because that is the parts that will be exposed and my hair does get oily. Um, so adding or just spraying a little dry shampoo the morning of takes care of that completely. And uh, I also, I didn't think I would need it, but I did end up bringing it. It was um, just like a shampoo and conditioner. Uh, if you're okay, um, I'm using your top or uh, any shampoo or conditioner that is at the hotel or the Airbnb on your topper, especially since it's just one time. You don't have to really bring one, but I just brought it just in case. I didn't think I'd have to, to wash my topper, but I ended up having to. And um, it was just kind of nice knowing that I had these like healthy um, products versus just whatever products were given to me. But that's definitely up to you. And then, of course, a hairbrush. Um, I love these um, these wet brushes uh, because I feel like the bristles are like not as um, tough on my hair. And I always use travel size ones every day because I don't have a lot of hair that I need to have like a huge brush. So, yep. And then I like that you could just put it into your purse because I just bring a brush with me everywhere. The next thing I brought with me was a... Um, a hair tie. Now I always talk about these hair ties. It's actually in my hair right now, so I can't completely show you, but I can lift it. Um, oh yeah, you can see it. It is a plastic hair tie and I love it because I can do this little updo here or put my hair like all in a ponytail and at the end of the day, there's no hard crease. There might be like a slight crease, but I mean, I usually just comb it out if I have to 
you know, put a straightener to it, but I usually never do. Um, and that's really helpful so you don't have to like intensely straighten your hair every time you use, you know, a ponytail holder. And um, I use it when I go to the gym or when I'm just like cooking and want my hair out of my face. Um, super, super easy. Uh, and I love that you don't have to worry about having to straighten it anywhere uh, or afterwards. And they're available on Amazon. They're relatively cheap. They come in packs. Awesome thing to have. And the next thing I brought was a hat. So it depends where you're going. Like if you're going to somewhere tropical, you'd probably bring more of a sun hat or like a baseball cap or something, if that's what you like. And then if you're going somewhere chillier, you'd bring a beanie or a winter hat. Now I did not bring a winter hat or a hat at all with me on this trip. Um, but let's get into what happened a little bit. Uh, I went to Amsterdam and on the way back, um, the airline canceled all of our flights because they went bankrupt. So we had to buy new tickets and the new tickets had a one hour uh, stop in uh, Iceland. The weather was so bad in Iceland that we could not leave in that hour. We had to stay for four days. Now I was not prepped for that, but luckily I had brought, bought a hat in Amsterdam. I love beanies. I used to love beanies just the way I look in them, but also because, um, I used to like the fact that I could put it on and not worry about my bio hair because I didn't have a topper back at then. So it was just a nice comforting thing, but I still like the way they look. So I bought a beanie in Amsterdam, which I didn't really use, but then once I got to Iceland, it was definitely chillier and windier. Um, so I was able just to throw on that beanie and um, when I was in high winded areas, I didn't have to worry about it. Um, in Iceland, it gets it can get so windy that um, they warn you when you rent a car not to let the door go if it's windy. You have to like open it and then close it because there are pictures of car doors completely ripped off of cars. Like that's how windy it gets. When we got there, there were people um, that let go of their luggages and their luggages were just dragged across by the winds and they had to like chase after them. Like my, my girl that went with me, she could barely stand up when we first got out. It was insane. So the wind is real out there. And um, having the beanie super, super, super helped. And I have a video here that I'm inserting uh, of me and totally carefree and enjoying myself, like photographing, because there, there was just no worry having the beanie on. You could see it in the camera, the way it's shaking, you could hear it. Um, it is insane. So uh, here's a video and uh, check out how I felt so confident with my beanie on. And the next thing I brought was a scarf. And this is just a regular scarf uh, that my uh, mom brought me from London. And um, I use it as a headscarf because I like the color, I like the pattern, it's super cute. Um, so what you can use this for. Um, I don't know if anyone is a silk sleeper, but there, um, there are people that sleep only on silk pillowcases because silk is supposed to be the most, um, the softest and gentlest uh, fabric for your hair. So let's say you wanted to, um, just in general, um, if on your bio hair, you could just um, sleep with this silk scarf on um, and it would be gentle on your bio hair. If you wanted to take a nap um, and not remove your topper, you could just throw this on. And I know because, I mean, with wigs, anything, you shouldn't sleep in them, they say. Um, it definitely like, you know, you roughen up the fibers or, uh, or you roughen up the hair and you just create like static and, you know, it gets tangled and frizzy. But if you were, had to or you really wanted to sleep with your topper on, this is definitely a better al alternative. And also, it's definitely like a look, you know. <laughs> um, and another thing you could do with it is let's say you have to just run out really quick and you don't wanna like worry about your part or anything or your part, you're having a bad part day um, or um, hairline day or something, uh, you could just easily uh, fold it up, especially if you're gonna be like on the beach or um, if you just wanna like run out of your room really quick for something, don't wanna deal with it, uh, you could just like fold it up, however thick or thin you want it. 
you get that little tuck that little thing in and then you don't have to worry about your part or your hairline at all it's a different way to do it I actually like doing it from the back underneath and then either just like simply crossing it over I love 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 like the texture and the folds it creates or like I said you can do it thin or you can like do this little twist to get this like texture up here going I also love that look um, you can get crazy making this a bow like you can do all sorts of stuff you know you can wear it like a regular bandana could, you know do it like this you can try doing it like a bow the bow is not really my look but if you do it right I'm sure like it'll be cute um, so yeah just super helpful what I did is I did the whole um, just wearing it so I could use it um, when I went swimming because I really didn't want to worry about um, you know how my part how my parts gonna look how my hairlines gonna look um, because when you, we, when you, when your hair gets wet, it's kind of, or I don't worry about it as much anymore because I feel like I've been caught in the rain with my topper and like when you, when it first starts happening, you start like imagining like, okay, uh, this is equivalent to when you first start getting your eyebrows done by like a new person or you first start getting your eyebrows done. This is like not cooperating now. Um, but it's like when you first start getting your eyebrows done, it's like you start thinking, oh my God, like this person is just ripping all my eyebrows off. Like they're plucking them. Or when you get a haircut, you're just like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't see. They're probably like cutting way too much off. That's the equivalence of getting caught or getting splashed on your topper. Now it's really not that bad um, because the first few times I got caught in the ring with my topper, I was just like, when I got to a mirror, I was like, oh my God, like, it looks great when in reality or we're in my head I was thinking oh my god the water's getting on it it's probably gonna you know show the show the silk you're gonna be able to see the cap construction you're gonna be able to see where like where the where the topper ends and begins like all this stuff and like no it looked totally fine and here's a vid where I actually um a lot of the places in Iceland before you go into the pools you get to like rinse from head to toe um, so then I took a video right after I just stood underneath the, um, the shower head and you see how my hair gets a little wavy, the top of hair gets a little wavy, um, but it does not look bad, which was such a relief. Um, but here, check out this vid. And this next video is of um, the silk scarf and how I used it when I went into the geothermal pools. Because before I actually um, discovered this high bun that I did, um, my ends would always get, I would, I would always put my hair in a ponytail and my ends would always get wet. And I would always have to wash my ends after going to the geothermal pools, which we went in one almost every day. So I really didn't want to be washing my topper every day. Um, but I put it in this high bun and I was so, so happy to feel that it wasn't tugging at my hair. Cause oftentimes when I do a pony, like up to here, like a mid pony, I feel like the clips are like dragging or like pulling your, there's tension for sure. But it was so nice when I did the high bun that was like over here. I did not feel that at all. And I was wearing it for a few hours. It was at some points really windy. And then I felt like having this also helped support it. Um, so here is that quick bit of how awesome, awesome, awesome it turned out and how confident I felt in being um, with my hair up because I don't usually put my hair up. Now, before I discovered that high bun, I did end up washing my topper, just like the ends, um, just because I didn't want um, to leave those like chemicals or it's just good to wash your hair if you go into like a pool for the, for the bleach and the chlorine or if you go into the ocean because of the salt. Just anytime my hair, I go into like a body of water, if my hair gets wet, I do wash and condition it, you know, that evening um, or pretty much after. 
And um, so before I discovered that high bun, I did have my ends get wet and I did wash it and I didn't, um, I didn't have like, you know, or I did have my drying rack, but it wasn't, this was like a little hair hack I did that um, in case you didn't happen to have your, um, your uh, wig stand. And I just put it on the side of a coffee table, let those ends hang and they dried beautifully. And the next thing I brought was a wig stand. Now, I was not gonna bring this because I was like, all right, I'm just gonna be seven days in Amsterdam. We're not gonna go to pools or I'm not gonna need to wash my topper. Well, the seven day or six day trip turned into almost two weeks. Um, and because we went to like a lot of those geothermal pools, um, I ended up having to wash my topper a couple times. And I was able to put it on the drying rack and it dried a lot better than if I were I think to lay it on a table or something and this takes up no room uh, it's crazy because I just brought it just in case um, just in case I made a video uh, which I ended up using it actually but it's awesome because like it collapses and it just goes on the bottom of your suitcase it takes up no room all right and the next thing I brought with me were my vitamins if you take any vitamins um, also along with that medications don't forget to bring that I use Viviscal and um, I just put it like in a smaller bottle with me so I was able to take everything with me no problem and since it ended up being a unknowingly extended vacation um, I had extra with me so I had enough um, and actually more thereafter but for example the friend I went with she did not bring enough of her medication so at the last day um, the day we ended up getting stuck in Iceland um, she ran out versus when I I'm just an over planner I think <laughs> um, but I had definitely enough so make sure you bring any of your vitamins and like a few extra just in case and the next thing, um, adhesives or powder is like, now I don't use that stuff, but think about, you know, your routine and your products that you use. Make sure you bring, you know, what you need and a little more just in case, cause you never know. And the topper I brought with me obviously was on my head, but let's say you wanted to bring an extra topper or wig or something. Um, I wouldn't just throw it in a bag and then into your suitcase. Cause like there's so much, um, compression and throwing around of the suitcase happening I would make sure it's protected and the way I store my um, my I, my toppers here is in a little plastic shoe box so and I got it at the container store perfect size um, and I would just put it in your carry-on better your carry-on because I feel like your check-ins they just don't really get it give it down um, and then just you know having it in that box will protect the shape of the cap um, and everything so um, that is a great option for if you're bringing a topper or wig with you and then in general just think about where you're going if you're gonna go somewhere Sunday sunny you know you want something to if your hair especially if your hair is color um, treated something to protect your hair like a UV protector or a hat or if you're going somewhere cold you know are you gonna bring um, you know, uh, a beanie. Uh, so just be prepared for wherever it is that you're going. And then all this stuff that I talked about today does not take very much room at all. Um, so I feel like it's better to be a little over prepared than end up somewhere where you can't find what you need. Uh, so, and on that note, I feel like I want to talk about, um, how I ended up um, yes, we have toppers and yes, sometimes we feel, we feel like, oh, I don't want to go into that pool because then that means I have to wash my topper or, oh, like, um, I already washed my topper once this week. I don't want to wash it again because, you know, no, like I feel like that's living a life that is limited when we got our hair toppers so we can live our lives, you know, to the fullest extent and to do what we want to do. I feel like um, having a topper doesn't mean now you have new limitations. Like, yes, in, at some re in some respect, but if you're like in, like for example, Iceland and it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity to be in these geothermal pools, like my ass is not going to sit out because I don't want to get my topper wet and I don't want to wash it. Like we got these toppers to build our confidence and to live lives and to push us into doing things that before we wouldn't have because we were self-conscious um so yes now we're here to live our lives confidently and um 
feeling like some bad bitches with our sick ass hair. So um, definitely don't let these things limit you. Um, if anything, let it inspire you to do more and to just live life how we're meant to. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm so happy I could share this with you. Uh, tell me about your experiences or the things you bring on your trips. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.